What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we have a new video. We're actually going to be working on making network cables. So here's a network cable I have actually made before and this is what we're going to make. So by the end of the video, you see it's, it's one cable. The goal is that everybody who watches this video is going to be able to make their own. It's, uh, it's a little tricky at first, but after we get this trick down, you're going to be able to make them no problem. And by the end of this video, you're going to be an expert at making network cables. So let's get right into it. So to start to make cable, you need to know a couple things. So the most common cable you're going to use in your house is called UTP, or Unshielded Twisted Pair. It's going to come in a roll like this. As you can get it from your local Home Depot or hardware store or whatever you might use. I bought a 100 feet of this. I bought Cat 6 because I wanted the speeds for 2.5 gig. You can use Cat 5B if you only want 1 gig. But I didn't want to make cables and then have to remake cables if I want to upgrade my network to 2.5 in the future. So UTP is Unshielded Twisted Pair. It is copper cable. It has four pairs of two strands, and they are copper. Compared to, you might have fiber, which uses a glass rod and passes light through, where copper uses an electric signal to pass through the bits across the cable. So UTP is most common. You're going to be getting it from when you get a new router or a modem for your ISP, and you're going to make cables. Usually, you're going to get cables pre-made. It might be the yellow one, or sometimes it's the black one. But usually it's like a three foot cable and now we're working on projects in our home lab where we might need different sizes so being able to make our own cable is something really good to know and once you understand the tricks it's super simple so i'm going to show you the trick today so i have a st stretch of cable that i cut i actually already terminated one end and we're going to cut the other end up and we're going to strip it and we're going to make our own cable on this side but before we can do that we need to know one more thing we need the wire and diagram so this is the wire and diagram we're going to use uh, it's upside down. This is the wire and diagram we're going to use, and you can see it's 568B. 568B is the most common one. There's 568A and there's 568B. You could use either one, but B is more common, so I'd recommend using B. I also would recommend printing up one of these diagrams when you make cable to make it a lot easier. I'm going to have mine next to me while I work, just to make it a lot easier. So now that we have all that out of the way, we're ready to start making cable. So I would say to, if it's your first time making cable, I would cut a little stretch just to practice with just because it's going to probably take a couple tries before you really get it down the right way. So, before all that too, sorry, I know we're jumping all around. You do need a couple things. You need wire crimpers, you need the cable and a roll of cable, you need RJ45 terminators. I know the glare is a little hard to see, let's see. You can see, you know, that's what it is. I have Cat6 ones, but if you're making Cat5 cable, we get Cat5 ones. They also make pass-through ones, so you can actually feed the ca the cable all the way through the, the terminator. And when you crimp it, it'll cut the extra ends off, and it terminates the cable on to the terminator. Uh, it's super simple. makes it a lot easier, but it's whichever way you want to go. And I would say get a tester. So I got a little tester here. I got this one just to make it easier, so when I test my cable, I can make sure that everything's good. And uh, makes it a lot easier because you're making a longer stretch of cable. You don't want to sit here and make the whole cable and then have to remake it because you, something's wrong and now you just lost it. So you take to make the cable, put it in, run it. You know, if you make a 100-foot cable, run it across a house or whatever it is, and then you figure out your cable's wrong. So super simple. Just get a tester. Make it easier on yourself. Now we can start. So I have my cable, and now we need to strip the end off. So you can see I actually already cut it, and there's a little rope end. So there's a little piece of rope that goes through the cable the whole way. It goes under the jacket, and uh, I, don't, it's, I don't know real the purpose of it. I know you can like pull it out. You're going to cut it. You can cut that out when you're done after you get your your strands exposed. We don't need this. So you can get your, we're going to strip the ends of the cable, and then you get your strands exposed, and then you can just trim that little piece of rope out. So I'm going to use my crimper. Let's see if we get that side. So I'm going to get my crimper, and you can see it has all different tools. We have a cutter and stripper. And then we have the terminated ends over here. There's RJ11 and RJ45, but we're going to use those later. But now you're going to strip the cable. So if you've never used cable strippers before, you're going to be careful with it. You don't want to stick your finger in there because there is a blade. But you can see there's a little notch. Uh, there it is. There's a little notch that is in there. And the cable's going to sit in there. And then you're going to put it through. And you're going to squeeze down. And you're just going to cut it a little bit. And then you're going to twist. And you're going to pull the cable out. And it's going to strip the jacket off the cable. So it's super simple. If it's your first time making cable, I would say make it a little bit longer just so you have a better set of strands to work with. So you can see I fed it through and I'm going to squeeze down, I'm going to twist, and then I'm going to pull. And you do got to give it a little force. 
and then we have our cable. So I squeezed a little too hard. I cut some of my strands a little bit. That's okay. I just ripped the jacket on them. This is a test cable, so we're learning from it. But so that's how you're going to strip the cable. So after you do that, you can throw away the extra jacket. So now we have our cable with our strands. So this is what it's going to look like. And that's what it is after you strip the jacket off. So now we can separate it so we can pull this out. A little messy. So now we're ready to separate our pairs and start untwisting them. So you can see there's four pairs and we need to untwist them. So we're going to do that. So we're going to take it and we're just going to untwist them. They come coiled up and we're going to try to straighten them out. So we just do that. Okay. So now after you uncoil the strands, you're going to have something that looks like this. It's a little messy. So we're going to try straightening it out and get them all in order to uh, be ready to get terminated. So I'm kind of just want to straighten them out and all of them kind of get tangled over. So you just kind of want to straighten them out so they sit nicely. And I like to kind of push everything forward so it's easier to work with. Because I want to pull them up when I start to put them in order. Because we do need to put them in order. So I'm going to have everything facing forward. You can see it's kind of just all pushing down. So when I'm ready to put them in order, I can just pull them up and get them in order. So now we're going to start putting them in order. So we're going to start with yellow, orange. This is where it gets a little tricky because now you need to maneuver all these strands around so you can get them in the right order. So I'm going to start working with them. So we need yellow, orange, orange. And then we need white, green. And now a trick I like to use when I do this is I like to use my pointer and my thumb. And I like to pinch the cables I'm working with to keep, to keep them in order. So you can see I'm holding these three strands and then I have my other strands to the side so when I'm ready I can add them in and keep these nice and tight. Another trick is if it's your first time making cable, cut your strands a little bit longer so when you're stripping the jacket give yourself more room, especially if you're using pass through crimp, uh, terminators, it's going to be a lot easier for you and then you, it'll just trim off the end because you want to make sure the jacket is tucked in. Uh, I'll show you that when we terminate the end on. But if it's your first time, make it longer so it's easier to work with. So I have orange, white, orange, green, white, and then we need blue. So we're going to get blue in there. Then we need blue, white. We need green. We need brown, white. And then we need brown. So I like to keep them nice and pinched tight. And you need to get them pretty close together so they get into the jack nicely. So that's why I like to pinch them and keep them nice and tight. And then you got to check over your order and make sure everything still lines up. So one of my strands is actually kind of out of order, which is okay. I'm going to fix that. So now after you get everything back in order, I know it's hard to see because my fingers are in the way, but I'm ready to slip mine into the Terminator. So here's your little Terminator, and when you're ready to do it, make sure that the clippy side faces away from you. And then make sure everything else is still in order. So then you're going to just kind of feed everything in, and you're going to push, and we're just going to keep pushing through, and get everything in. So I lost my order, so I need to fix that, and then I'm going to put it back through and I'll show you. Alright, it's almost set again. So I'm going to pass this through. You want to hold it as long as you can to feed it through. And then you just got to give it a good push. Just keep pushing. And it's the pass-through jacks, so it's able to go all the way through. And I'm just going to keep pushing. And I want to get it so the jack is all the way in. I actually lost a strand, so I'm going to fix that. So you can see I have my cat my end all the way on and I have the pass through going so they're all the way through and now we're ready to crimp. So you're going to take your crimper tool and you're going to find the RJ45 side. So there it is. You can tell because it's bigger and then you're just going to feed it through just like it's a regular ethernet cable. Mine's a little hung through and I don't have a uh, pass through so I'm just going to trim these ends off real quick. So I trimmed down those ends a little bit so now I'm ready to terminate. So now I'm going to grab my crimper. I'm just going to feed it in and it just sits in just like it's a regular port 
and you're squeeze, 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 and you squeeze all the way until it doesn't stop, and then you're all set. And now you've successfully terminated your first patch cable. So now the next step is to test it. I'm not actually going to test this cable because my ends are a little messed up, but I'm going to test another cable. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is the other cable I showed you in the beginning of the video. I made this cable previously, and I'm going to show you how to use a cable tester with it. So this is my cable tester. It's a nice little one from Klein. I got it from Home Depot. I'm just going to power it on. So you can see it powers on. And then I have the light on. I hope you can help you see. Maybe not. Let's turn the light off. I think you can see that better now. So it's super easy to use it. It has a port on the top and a port on the bottom. And you just got to plug the cable on both sides of that. So I'm going to plug it into the bottom. And it just sits in there. I'm going to plug it into the top. And that's in. And we're going to click test. And let me just get it so you can see it. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay. So now you can see the, the cable tester tested the cable. And it actually tells me up here uh, it passed. One, one of these days, I'll get this down in the video. It's hard because the camera reverses what I do. So you can see up here, it passed, and it actually tells me the pin out. So if the cable failed, it'll tell me which pins are either open or failed out. So if you reverse two of the strands, it'll tell you which ones are open and which ones need to be fixed. If you have everything good, it's going to tell you it's passed. If not, it's going to tell you, which is really nice about using one of these ones with a digital display. They have other ones that just have lights on them and no display. And they're a little bit trickier to use because it can't always tell you exactly what's open or what's missing. So if you're looking to get a cable tester, I would spend a little bit more money on this and get a nice one so it's ready going for the future. But this is how you test the cable, and now I know this cable works and it's good to be used. So I think this was a somewhat uh, very useful video. Everybody at some point is going to have to make a network cable, and especially now you're going to need it. So as you can see, super simple. We just made a cable right here. It's going to work. And I have another cable right here that's going to work as well. We know how to test them. We know how to crimp them, know how to cut them, all this good stuff. And now we're ready to keep making cables for our environment. So this is really useful because when you start making your first server rack, you might not need a 3-foot cable or a 5-foot cable. You might need a 6-inch cable or something shorter or longer. So being able to make your own cable is super useful. And you get all the tools and everything, and you're all set. It's, uh, it's a great skill to have, and it's definitely useful going forward. I'm going to be making my cable going forward, and I hope you are too using this video. So I hope you like the video. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and stick around. We have a really good video coming up next week, and I think everybody's going to enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.